here we are coming into the Hula Hideaway. We have the giant marlin up on the wall. As we come around, we have vintage airline ads. We come back around. We have the mermaid. We have Aloha Elvis. Here we have Heather Waters, our hostess. What's that? The Joseph Faher 1950s Dole Map of Hawaii. The Whitco Viking ship. But wait, there's more. Vintage Hula Hula Pinball Machine. Peacock chair in the corner. Vintage Tiki Aquarium, complete with puffer fish display. Fugus galore. Now this right here, this is mid-century Tiki. So here we are in the Hula Hideaway. This, Heather, this, this place, this is my happy place. If I could make a bar for myself to inhabit, this would be it. So I am, I am just completely I'm impressed with what you you've done. <laughs> so Tiki, Tiki took like a Polynesian backbone and it hung all kinds of other world exotic things on it. But your bar here takes it back to what I think is a damn near perfect mid-century 1950s Polynesian theme. When you came to this, this was your second bar that you designed in your house. What was your overall philosophy? How did you, how'd you come by this place? I just wanted, I've never been to Hawaii and <laughs> you the and islands. Both. And so I wanted it to feel like what I envision of a home tiki bar. So you don't have to get on a plane, you just have to no, go downstairs. It, exactly. and. <laughs> It's all about the escapism. For me, it's all about the decor, what everyone's wearing. Mm. And I know for some, it's about the drinks. And it's not for me because I don't even know what certain drinks and ingredients that we're out of right now. But, but you like a little, a little tropical vibe in a cocktail now and again. Oh, absolutely, yes. More on the sweeter side for me, but. Mm. So what, what I said earlier, I, I totally meant that this, this bar is, is immersive and transportative. That you, you walk through the, 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 the beaded curtain to get in here, and there's no windows, and you are in a completely different world. And there's nothing that really takes you out of the fact that you are in a mid-century tiki bar. And it's, it, I don't know, I'm, I'm gushing too much here. But <laughs> well, I feel like you can see pictures of this bar or video. Mm-hmm. But it's different when you actually get to come in because it's just, I feel like it takes all this weight off of you and you can just relax and forget about all your worries. You, you have a vacation right here in your house. Yeah. But this bar, so you, you were inspired by others, but I really love is the fact that you took it upon yourself to really hope that your home bar can inspire other people to, to, to follow the same kind of journey. Can you, can you elaborate Absolutely. on that some? I mean... Obviously, going to the home tiki bars on the tour bus, I thought, I want to do one. And I didn't have this envisioned. It just kind of evolved into this. But it inspired me, and I hope that, you know, someone out there watching, that it inspires them. Because I think that this is what everyone should be doing, is creating their own little escapisms at home. Because you're more safe and comfortable at home. And You, you don't have to drive home when you're done. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I mean, I love to entertain and I want people to feel comfortable and I like to have lots of seating and I'm just, uh, my favorite part of when people come here is I like to watch their expression when they first walk through, through those beaded curtains and to look on their face. You know, their faces light, light up and the only way I can describe it is like a kid on Christmas morning, you know, when they come out and they see 
all the presents and this is kind of for some people so, so these your are bar like is, your, is your it's your gift to your friends and family absolutely this is my gift for everyone else it's not just for me i want to share it with everyone else and that is a beautiful sentiment hey gang we'll get back to the tiki conversation here in just a second but i want to let you all know they have t-shirts for sale they are screen printed in america the artist is tony canapa and uh they're going for twenty dollars a piece twenty five dollars including shipping if you're interested in buying one, go to my website, tikiwithray.com, and then there's a tab that says buy a t-shirt. Click on there and just follow the prompts. So uh, thank you very much. When you were putting this bar together, what were what were some of the things that you wanted to, I know that you had a checklist because you've been collecting for years. You you started going on the Tiki Tours in, in 2016, is that yes, correct? that's and correct. And then your bar was featured in 2019. Yes, and so I didn't even get to start till summer of 18. Hmm. So one so, year span so is when, how when, much I collected. So when you were collecting and setting up, what were the things that you had to have for your bar, for your aesthetic? I wanted hula statues, hula lamps. I thought that was important to have a Velvet Elvis. Um, I wanted to have cool, funky lamps, you know, the puffer fish mm -hmm. and... Just, I don't know if you have a lot of bamboo and rattan. Yes, that was going to be my other thing. I love wood, wood carvings. you got to have tiki's. But, yeah, I mean, those were things. And I wanted to have an oil lamp because I always saw them growing up. Yes, I see that your, your oil lamp, you, you adapted it by taking what looks like a Coco Joe <laughs> statue and putting it in place of the traditional Greek goddess. Yeah. You're thinking, what's your favorite thing? <laughs> I, I look around and everything is my favorite thing. If I could exist in one tiki bar, this is the one to be in. So how, how did you come? <laughs> you collected so much. How did you decide what went in your bar and what went in your husband's bar? Because uh, people have probably already seen Don's bar upstairs. So how did yeah. you decide what's yours and what's his? Well, when we started to get this space cleared out, because it was kind of like a kid playground toy room area mm -hmm. and I knew what my favorite things were and he loves Elvis so I couldn't steal his velvet Elvis I had to go and find mine of course right. I you have Aloha him. Elvis with the yes. leg <laughs> and I found the bigger one yes and I just wanted to make this more South Pacific feel and so I was more adamant on that and you know of course if I steal something upstairs he'd be like well, where are you going to put in place? Don't worry. I've got plenty of other things to put there. So I know, I know you're not done. What, what are you still trying to do? What do you, what do you think is the next stage? Where, where's, the, where's the hula hideaway going? <laughs> well, our granddaughter keeps telling us that we need to make the whole house tiki. She says, Mimi, you need to buy more tiki stuff, which is just, you know, music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, one of my favorite things is how you, how you described how, you, how your five-year-old granddaughter found your secret for finding the good stuff. Oh, Where yes. do you go? <laughs> She's always, Mimi, did you get that at the Goodwill? <laughs> like, yes, Mimi went to the Goodwill. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I love thrift stores. I like to grab a item from the shelf and wonder how did it end up here? You know, how did something from the islands make it over here and mm. it's, you know, ended up at the thrift store and, you know, Oregon, of so all what, what was the most difficult item in here for you to procure? The most difficult, like hunting. The one that for you, a long the one that you time? chased down, like you couldn't find it, or it just took you a long time to convince somebody to, to, to allow you to take it home. <laughs> I've been really lucky. I haven't had an item where I've been searching and searching and finally came across it, but I do think that I worked really hard for the six band furniture because you're your, uh, Frankel style. Yes. Because I personally had to drive the U-Haul truck up to Washington. Yes, you did the heavy lifting on that and one. And lifted it, literally, all of those pieces by myself. You and, earned every item. And I, I had seen these items, but I had never had my hands on them, so I did not realize how heavy they are. So I think that I worked the hardest for those pieces. Well, I can say your your bar, more than any other home bar I've been in, has the spirit of aloha. It makes you feel welcome. welcome. It makes you feel like you're in a, in, a, in a distant, relaxed land. So, perfect. Well, I'm absolutely you can perfect. come and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having us out, Heather. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Anyone's always welcome.